Hey everyone, how's it going? It's that nerd Ryan here. Uh, first off, before we get into this video, I want to apologize for most likely today and tomorrow and maybe Wednesday's video. Um, I'm coming, I'm getting over something right now, so um, I might sound a little congested and might take breathing breaks. So I do apologize. Um, also, I do not have this list memorized out behind me. Um, I have the DVDs lined up uh, for this, so if I keep looking back, I do apologize. Uh, it's just hard to remember things right now, let's just say. Um, so yeah, so anyways, let's get into talking about the Phase 4 Marvel movies. Um, phase 4 is officially ended with Black Panther Wakanda Forever, uh, and we are now moving into Phase 5 as of next year in February, I believe. Um, so, I'm excited, I hope you guys are too. Phase 4 altogether was very rocky. It had a lot of hit or misses. We're going to talk about one of the misses today and my all-time favorite hit. And then either next week or the week after that, we're going to do Phase 4 as a whole. As in all the TV shows, all the movies, the special, um, and I Am Groot, I think is part of Phase 4 technically. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and talk about all of that. So let's get this list going today. There are seven movies in Phase 4. So let's start with number seven being The Eternals. That was the first Oscar-worthy or Oscar-marketed Marvel movie, and it shows that they were trying too hard in this. It was a very boring movie with a very big cast. Uh, it's hard to keep track of everybody, even though half of them die. Uh, it still is just hard to keep track of 10 cast members, all with different abilities and personalities, but also with the same abilities and same backgrounds. It's convoluted, long, and boring. And as of right now, doesn't add much to the MCU besides introducing Eternals and the idea of Celestials. Other than that, it's just kind of a boring, skippable movie. Number six is Black Widow, the movie that kicked off the movie part of the MCU Phase 4. Uh, this was a highly anticipated movie for multiple reasons. COVID, Black Widow should have been getting a movie since Phase 1, everything like that. But this movie was built up to almost nothing. It's a previous movie, or it's a preview movie that doesn't really advanced the MCU story at all. Um, there's not a lot of weight to what's going on just due to the fact that we know where everything's going. And it feels weird introducing new characters to Natasha's background without like really having them implemented in past movies since this is a prequel. Which a lot of prequels have that issue, but this one does exactly that. Uh, next would be Thor Love and Thunder. <clears throat> I feel like this movie was kind of a necessary sequel. Um, it's nice that Thor got a fourth movie and that Chris Hemsworth wants to stay around to make more Thor movies. But this movie basically felt like Ragnarok continued. Like, it, it takes place after um, Phase 3, but still it also, at the same time, just feels like it's a continuation of Ragnarok, as in, like, no character development, no... I mean, there's character development, but also at the same time there isn't. Uh, no change in humor. And even though the stakes are high, they just don't feel high because everything's a joke in it. Um, after that, we're going to finally get kind of into the good stuff with next being Doctor Strange of the Multiverse of Madness. This movie was a skeptical or spectacle. I saw it in IMAX because it feels like it needed to be seen in IMAX. Beautiful scenes, beautiful characters uh, added on, great cameos. My only issue was that the Illuminati only lasted 10 minutes. And also, certain other aspects of the movie being like not really being a multiverse, just a two or three universe thing that people or three yeah three universe thing not a multiverse it's a little disappointed in that i was hoping for like more different universes and not just 
go on red, and this one's falling apart. I was hoping that we get like maybe a whole fraction of it where they're in like the 90s Spider-Man animated series as done in that animation or something. But <clears throat> can't always get what you want. Next is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, it's just hard to put between the other two movies on this list. But this was a great origin story and just a great story altogether. It was so fun to watch, so fun to enjoy. And honestly, I was so hyped. I think I saw it three times in a row the weekend it came out because it was just so good. I loved it. It was the perfect Phase 4 original movie. Because next we have Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I literally talked about this movie last week. I'm not going to talk about it as much as I did again. But this was a perfect tribute to Chadwick Boseman. And <clears throat> even though I was skeptical going into the movie, I thought it was well done. And it also added to the MCU in big ways. Which is something that I never expected. But it really did. And that was really great. I mean, adding that Val is now CIA, uh, head of CIA, that, uh, like, the whole idea of to call, I believe it is, but, uh, Atl MCU Atlantis, because they can't use that name because of the DC, um, and, like, just Na Namor and everything like that, it's just, it's phenomenal. I loved it. But, nothing can beat Spider-Man No Way Home. That is my all-time favorite movie, or maybe my second favorite. It always switches between that and Empire Strikes Back, so it's one of those two. But, I mean, this movie was the perfect Spider-Man movie. I can't really say more other than just it's the perfect Spider-Man movie. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment what your ranking is, and subscribe, and ring that bell down below. It's that and Ryan telling you. Have an amazing day.